Hello, my name is Tiffany Chang and this is Connector as CEO, where I take ideas from other industries and share how we can apply them as arts leaders. I imagine a world where leaders help people thrive, feeling more valued, seen, and fulfilled, while knowing that their work truly matters. I like you to imagine that I'm conducting a rehearsal and a big clarinet solo is coming up. It's a free cadenza-like passage and a clarinet player can really do whatever they want artistically. They play the solo and they play well. I'm of course inclined to say to them, great job. Though, like most high achieving leaders, I'm tempted to keep going and say, great job, but it would be better if you did X, Y, and Z. Now, I'm giving a lot of value by pointing out what could be better and giving them ready-made specific suggestions on how they can do it. Isn't that my job as a conductor? Executive coach Marshall Goldsmith calls this adding too much value. And he says that this habit can backfire for leaders at times. Our work environments are still entrenched firmly in a top-down management style, where the leader's job is to tell people what to do, and the people are to obey. It's what we've learned, and it's how we're trained. So it's what we do. And this is how orchestras operate. What's overlooked in this mindset is that Subordinates often know more than the leaders do about particular areas of expertise. In fact, an expectation of high expertise is why they were hired in the first place. So while a conductor can strive to hold as much expertise as possible, it is more realistic to assume that I would not know more about this clarinet solo than the clarinet player themselves. Just think about all the numerous times they've performed the solo, the hours they've spent on thinking about its interpretation, plus the variety of insights they've gathered over their entire career about the solo from their training and their mentors. When we give praise, we recognize that expertise and the individual contribution they bring to the table. Though when we go too far and add too much value, we can quickly diminish that expertise. And this happens when we follow praise immediately with our suggestions. When we do that, Marshall Goldsmith explains that it deflates their enthusiasm. It dampens their commitment. And while the quality of the idea may go up 5%, their commitment to execute it may go down 50%. That's because it's no longer their idea. It's now your idea. When we add too much value, we don't realize that we are taking away the individual's ownership of that work. We stop giving space for other solutions or ideas to even show their face. We can miss out on perhaps better ideas as well. And we find ourselves in the common trap where the leader's suggestions automatically become orders. Of course, when something is incorrect or technically problematic, we need to jump in and give corrective measures. At the same time, we can also find opportunities every day to take a step back and refrain from adding too much value. The key is to recognize that we don't always need to be adding value. It's very easy to add too much value, actually, because it's in our nature. It's our tendency to show that we know all the best ways to do something and to maintain our standing in that top-down hierarchy. One quick intervention we can implement is to simply stop after the praise. Pause and think if it's really worth saying that next thing you're about to say. If it is, say it. If not, you don't really have to. You'd be surprised at how many times it may be the latter. So ask yourself, how might you have been adding too much value in your work as a leader? And what impact might that have had on the people you lead? 
If these ideas resonate with you, please consider signing up in the link below to receive an email with each new blog post sent directly to your inbox. Thank you and have a great day.